Nostradamus is probably the most famous clairvoyant in history. Some may see him as a prophet or a seer, and some say that his predictions were simply based on broad speculation. According to some interpretations, he was able to accurately predict both world wars, 9-11, earthquakes and more. His work grew in popularity in the mid-20th century when author Henry Roberts released his book The Complete Prophecies of Nostradamus in 1947. So, let's delve into the spooky world of clairvoyance and take a look at the life and work of Nostradamus the clairvoyant. He was born in December of 1503 to a Jewish family in France who had all converted to Catholicism before his birth. At the age of 15 he began studying at the University of Avignon for his bachelorette but was forced to leave after just over a year when the university decided to close its doors due to an outbreak of the plague. According to his own account he travelled the countryside for eight years after leaving the university to research herbal remedies. In 1529, after some years as an apothecary, he entered the University of Montpellier to study for a doctorate in medicine. He was expelled shortly afterwards by the student procurator when it was discovered that he had been an apothecary a manual trade that was expressly banned by the university statutes and he had also been slandering doctors. His expulsion document still exists in the faculty library to this day. After his expulsion, Nostradamus continued working, presumably still as an apothecary, and became famous for creating a rose pill that purportedly protected against the plague. After another visit to Italy, Nostradamus began to move away from medicine and toward the occult. Although evidence suggests that he remained a Roman Catholic and was opposed to the Protestant Reformation. It seems that he could have dabbled in horoscopes, necromancy, scrying and good luck charms such as the Hawthorn Rod. Following popular trends, he wrote an almanac for 1550 for the first time latinizing his name from Nostradam to Nostradamus. He was so encouraged by the almanac's success that he decided to write one or more annually. It was mainly in response to the almanacs that the nobility and other prominent persons from far away soon started asking for horoscopes and psychic advice from him. Though he generally expected his clients to supply the birth charts on which these would be based, rather than calculating them himself as a professional astrologer would have done. When obliged to attempt this himself on the basis of the published tables of the day, he frequently made errors and failed to adjust the figures for his client's place or time of birth. He then began his project of writing a book of 1,000 mainly French quatrains which constitute the largely undated prophecies for which he is most famous for today. The quatrains published in a book titled Les Prophéties or The Prophecies received a mixed reaction when they were published. Some people thought that Nostradamus was a servant of evil, a fake or insane, while many of the elite evidently thought otherwise. Catherine de' Medici, wife of King Henry II of France, was one of Nostradamus' greatest admirers. After reading his almanacs for 1555, which hinted at unnamed threats to the royal family, she summoned him to Paris to explain them and to draw up horoscopes for her children. 
Nostradamus claimed to base his published predictions on judicial astrology, the astrological judgment or assessment of the quality and thus the potential of events such as births, weddings and coronations, but was heavily criticised by professional astrologers of the day for incompetence and for assuming that comparative horoscopy, the comparison of future planetary configurations with those accompanying known past events could actually predict what would happen in the future. Research suggests that much of his prophetic work paraphrases collections of ancient end-of-the-world prophecies, mainly Bible-based, supplemented with references to historical events and anthologies of omen reports, and then projects those into the future in part with the aid of comparative horoscopy. So, if Nostradamus was so incompetent at predicting future events, how did he gain such popularity in recent years? What predictions did he make that made people believe his work was so accurate? Well, there are a number of famous events that he supposedly predicted, the first being the Great Fire of London. His prediction went something like this. The blood of the just will be demanded of London, burnt by fire in the year 66. The ancient lady will fall from her high place, and many of the same sect will be killed. What actually happened was that a small fire started in the bakery of Thomas Farinar on Pudding Lane in London on September 2, 1666, which turned into a three-day blaze that consumed the city. One of the explanations for the blood of the just refers to the millions of flea-carrying rats that were killed. Also, peasant deaths were not recorded at the time, but it has long been held that six people perished in the fire. Then there was the French Revolution, which he seemed to predict with absolute precision. From the enslaved populace, songs, chants and demands, while princes and lords are held captive in prisons, these will in the future, by headless idiots, be received as divine prayers. In 1789, the French people decided that they had enough of poor aristocratic rule and they revolted. The peasants, or enslaved populace, took control of Paris and forced their demands on royalty. The aristocracy, the princes and lords, were taken from power and were locked in the Bastille, the prisons, and beheaded at the guillotine, which refers to the headless idiots. A third and final prediction I'll share with you for this episode is that of the atomic bomb. Near the gates and within two cities, there will be scourges the likes of which was never seen. Famine within plague, people put out by steel, crying to the great immortal god for relief. In early August 1945, the United States dropped two atomic weapons on the island of Japan within two cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The suffering endured by those in the blast and the radiation poisoning suffered by those who escaped the immediate detonation cried to the great immortal god for relief. So, do you believe that Nostradamus was the greatest clairvoyant the earth has ever seen? Or was he just a mediocre astrologer who used biblical prophecies to create outlandish predictions of future events? Whatever the case may be, it is undeniable that some of his prophecies were frighteningly accurate, such as that of the French Revolution and the atomic bomb. I'd love to hear what you think, so why not leave a comment with your thoughts on Nostradamus? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to my channel, why not subscribe so you don't miss the next exciting episode of Strangeries. Thanks for watching.